We are together in this virtual space for a time of renewal and a time of spiritual strengthening, and welcome to worship with One United Church of Christ. Whether this is your first time with us, your 50th or your 500th, we are very glad that we can be together, and we are grateful that you made time in your day for this time of spiritual centering and renewing. A bulletin that accompanies today's service can be found on the podcast section of our website at oneucc.org, oneucc.org. It was also included in the weekly church email that was sent out on Thursdays and posted to Facebook. We encourage you to take a look at that bulletin. Lots of good stuff in it. You can find all the materials for worship. You can find a prayer list. You can find announcements and follow it throughout the week. Highlighting a couple things from the announcement, we are doing our annual community Easter egg hunt on Saturday, March 27th from 2 to 4 in drive-up fashion. There will be no gathering of people, but instead you can drive through in your cars and pick up a bag of eggs and take them home and hide them wherever you would like. Instead of handing out plastic eggs like we usually do for donations, we are asking people who would like to make a donation to either bring one of three things to church, and the information about how you do that is in the bulletin, but the three things are uh, candy or toys small enough to fit inside of an Easter egg, or cash. We have prize eggs that are part of it. So if you would like to support the Easter egg hunt in any way, shape, or form, check out the bulletin for more details or give the church office a call. The hearts that you continue to see and that are all over the space remind us of the 22,000 plus people in Pennsylvania who have died from COVID-19. We keep doing the things that we need to do to mitigate risk. We keep praying. We keep trying to value the lives of each other. And thank you for your support of that and the ways that you are taking care of one another. And thank you for your support of this ministry. Without you, it would not be possible. Your financial contributions, your prayers, your presence, your gifts and skills that you share with us are much appreciated. Friends, we take a breath and we center ourselves in worship, remembering we come into the presence of the one who laid the foundations of the world, the one who determined its measurements, who laid its cornerstone. We are in the presence of the one who caused the morning stars to sing and the heavens to shout for joy the one who created the storehouses for the rain and the snow. We worship in the presence of the one who rearranged the stars in the sky and who fashioned all living things, the one who puts wisdom into our souls and understanding into our minds. Gathered now in the awesome presence of the one who fashioned all that is, let us worship God. Part of what we do as people who live faith in God is examine our relationship with the Holy One. God promises us grace and forgiveness when we confess our weaknesses and our sins. In a spirit of searching for a deeper relationship with God, may we pray together. Lord God, you have formed us for connection. We desire to be seen and known, yet we are afraid of real intimacy. We've been hurt in the past, so we build walls for the future. We've been teased for who we are, so we keep to ourselves. We know the sting of trying to form a relationship only to be rejected. Fearful of pain, we convince ourselves cheap imitations of connection are safer and more desirable, while loneliness nags our solitude. When we value protection over authentic relationship, forgive us. We pray you would show us how to connect with others, 
how to be those who are marvelously made in your likeness, seen and seen, loved and loving. Amen. God shows us how to be in right relationship with God's self, with each other, and with ourselves. Yet the Holy One doesn't stop there. With grace, patience, and understanding, God gives us the tools to build authentic relationships, to move toward deeper connections for which we were formed. For this we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. We certainly have had some snow here in the Berks County, Pennsylvania area over the past week. Snow is in the forecast for the next 10 days or so. And in these snowy and chilly winter days and on top of a global pandemic, it's pretty easy to feel lonely. This week we wonder, where is God when I'm, when we're lonely? As we listen to our scripture for today, Psalm 139, I invite you to listen for where the author of this beloved passage of Scripture senses God's presence. And as you listen, also ask yourself, where are you sensing God's presence these days? And so from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12. Lord, you have examined me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Even from far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all my ways. There isn't a word on my tongue, Lord, that you don't already know completely. You surround me front and back. You put your hand on me. That kind of knowledge is too much for me. It's so high above me, I can't reach it. Where could I go to get away from your spirit? Where could I go to escape your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I went down to the grave, you would be there too. If I could fly on the wings of dawn, stopping to rest only on the far side of the ocean, even there your hand would guide me, even there your strong hand would hold me tight. If I said, the darkness will definitely hide me, the light will become night around me, even then the darkness isn't too dark for you. Nighttime would shine bright as day because darkness is the same as light to you. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Seek.
called my name and made a way to fly out of the darkness and into the light. Years of keeping secrets safe. To the light from fear of shame to the world of life. Mercy called on you and made a way to fly out of the darkness and into the light. you join me in prayer? Holy and gracious God, your voice echoes through our days, and we pray that we may hear you speaking to us, hear your words of love and claim and identity. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. While the last almost year has provided many challenges we've needed to navigate, one of the trickiest, even more demanding than figuring out how to procure groceries or meaningfully celebrate birthdays, is how do we cope with loneliness? Whether we live alone or in a household with others, we can still struggle with feeling lonely. We miss being with our friends as we were before, we miss holiday celebrations. We miss seeing people not related to us. Right now might be a lonely season for you. It is for many. Our normal social patterns have been disrupted, and even as vaccines become more widely available, we have no idea when things will go back to quote-unquote normal. We long, though, to get together with family and friends, to gather at church, to go out for a meal and linger over good food and good conversation. Even the introverts among us are craving human interaction. In this season, we're being confronted with our needs for connection. And like other times in our lives when we have to or are forced to take a good, deep look at ourselves, the introspection is a bit rough. Loneliness is tricky, and we need to be precise about what it means as we wonder, where is God when we're lonely? Lonely is not the same as being alone. You can live alone, dine alone in public, be the only one in a space, and not be lonely at all. Conversely, you can be lonely when crowded by people. 
You can feel lonely even if you're living with others, even if you're the most popular person in your social circles. Loneliness has little to do with others, ironically. Loneliness has more to do with us, our perceptions and our needs. Various articles about loneliness define this phenomenon as stemming from our lack of satisfaction with our social relationships in that we perceive our relationships not to be sufficient in quantity or quality. Loneliness can also result from a sense of not being seen and known. Perhaps at some point in your life, you spent time with people who you felt just didn't quote unquote get you. Maybe there were people you worked with, maybe people in a social organization, maybe even members of your own family. That sense of not being understood is the feeling of not being seen and known. Likewise, maybe you had times in your life when you felt like you couldn't be yourself around someone or groups of people, and you put on a different persona, a mask of sorts to fit in. This too is part of not being seen and known. For the purposes of this message, we'll define loneliness as the sense we have of not being seen and known for who we truly are. We can feel lonely because we have limited social interactions, limited opportunities to see and known and to be seen and known ourselves. We can feel lonely meeting the needs of people all day long, people who take from us without stopping to see us, truly see us. Lonely times are tough. After a while, the loneliness starts playing tricks on us, telling us we don't matter, we don't have value, nobody likes us, God's presence is just part of the opioid of the masses religious charlatans want to sell us. These voices are hard to silence. For us people of faith, when the voices start telling us that we are unseen and unloved, this is the moment when we lean into our faith. One way we counter these sinister, lonely voices is by turning to words of scripture. As an avid reader and lover of the written word, I believe writings can be good company. A fantastic book can be a fine companion, sometimes preferable to that of demanding complicated people. Words of scripture, too, can be powerful company especially in seasons where all is not right with us and in our word, worlds. Psalm 139 is a passage of scripture that has kept me company during some long stretches of lonely times. And this psalm is one of the treasures of the Bible. These words are beloved by many people of faith who keep them close, hold them as company. If you haven't read Psalm 139 in its entirety, I encourage you to do so sometime this week. Find a quiet moment, take in the words of the psalm, and linger with them. Let their images seep into your faith imagination and stir your soul. The part of the psalm that we heard a few minutes ago captures the essence of this scripture. No matter what we do, no matter where we go, no matter all that happens to us, God is there thoroughly knowing us, guiding us, and holding us. As we wonder today about where God is when we're lonely, in those times when we don't feel seen and known, the Sunday school answer Psalm 139 readily provides is God sees us and knows us. God is there. God is there in the heights of heaven. God is there in the depths of hell. God is there on the wings of the morning. God is there on the farthest side of the sea. There is no place in all creation where we are not guided and held by the hands of God. While the reality of God's constant presence is true and such good news in lonely times, whether or not we can sense God, we need to go a little bit deeper than just that answer, saying, oh yeah, God is there in lonely times, whether or not you know it. Perhaps the better question we can ask is how does God meet us in our loneliness? How does God search us out in those times when we don't feel seen and known and the lonely voices echo loudly in our souls? God meets us in our loneliness in ways exactly 
like this. Yes, exactly like sitting on your living room couch watching this service on YouTube. Yes, exactly like hearing this service through your speakers in your car as you're going to your destination. God is meeting you right now, wherever you are, however you are getting this service. Even in this virtual time, even though we are gathered separately but still in community. While you might be worshiping in your bubble, you are not worshiping alone. Of course, God is there. We also remember that time and space are irrelevant to the Holy Spirit. A community is making this worship moment happen, not just Jeff and me. We're merely the people who represent this community on camera. Those who don't show up in this recording are those who support the work of One UCC through prayer, through presence, through sharing time, finances, and resources. Those who have gone before us and built our predecessor congregations and the Christian Church Universal, the countless multitudes in the communion of saints who have passed their faith and traditions and experience and wisdom and passion for Christ through to us. God meets us in every time and every space where we are. If we went up to the International Space Station, if we went down to the deepest part of the Marianas Trench, if we flew to Western Australia or combed the depths of the dark web, God is there. In each one of those places, in every place and time in between, the author of our existence sees us, knows us, and loves us. And because God sees us and loves us, because God has shaped us for community, the Holy One will guide us when we allow God to others who will see us for who we truly are. Even still, in seasons of loneliness, the lonely voices try to tell us another story, whispering to us that God doesn't care, nobody cares. Disciplines such as worship and others like Bible study, community, and prayer give us the tools and the training that we need to hold on to the real truth of our existences when these voices begin to murmur. As those called beloved by God and claimed by God, we are never really alone. When lonely voices start to swirl, that's when we pick up a Bible and read a passage of scripture like Psalm 139 that provides powerful company. When these voices try to tell us a false story that nobody cares about us, that's when we turn to God in prayer and ask the Holy One to show us those people who do care. When these voices are strong and screaming that no one gets us, That's when we turn to a favorite song, writing, photograph, piece of art that reminds us someone else has felt the same way and understands. When we can't block out the lonely voices through our own efforts, that's when we pick up the phone and call or text someone who can remind us of our value, whether that person is a friend, a counselor, a pastor, a church friend, or someone who just gets us. In lonely seasons, God meets us in our loneliness and searches us out through scripture and prayer, through song, beauty, and art, through the people around us. God meets us in our loneliness through the company of words and people who cause us to feel seen and known. Lonely times can feel like a wasteland, but they are not wasted times. While God meets us in our loneliness, God also desires to use our loneliness. Lonely seasons, as we said before, are introspective seasons. And if we allow them to do so, they teach us the necessity of seeing and getting to know others. We can use the pain of loneliness to become bitter, giving back to others the pain that we feel. Yet we can also use the pain of loneliness to teach us how to see and know others so that they and we are less alone. My friends in Christ, God sees you and God knows you in all the places where you are. None of us is ever truly alone. 
The truth of your existence is that God loves you for who you really are, the core identity you possess underneath all other masks, behaviors, insecurities, and labels, even if the other voices are trying to tell you differently. You are beloved by God, shaped and known by an everlasting love. May this truth stay close to you, keeping you company today and in the days ahead. Amen. So when we lead worship here in the sanctuary, it's just Jeff and me right now, but we are not alone. Of course, God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. The presence and prayers of our community is here. One of the challenges we have at this time of year is how do we install our leaders for 2021? We had our annual meeting last Sunday where we voted to have a new elder, Robin West, come aboard our church council and join in the leadership of the congregation. And we extended the terms of the two outgoing council members, Laurie Beal and Dave Beard, for another year to stay on council and fill out our council. And so we couldn't have all of them come in the sanctuary and join us because of COVID, but they met on Tuesday night and we installed them virtually. And as we in, go into that piece of liturgy, I invite you as a congregation to respond in the places where the congregational response is indicated and to respond with me and to continue holding our leaders and our congregation in your prayers. Grace, mercy, and peace from Jesus the Christ, the head of the church in heaven and on earth. To God be the glory in the church from all generations forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, it is our honor and responsibility to recognize, pray over, and bless our leaders for this new year. We do this by installing the entire council for 2021. During this time in worship, we ask God's spirit upon them and us all so that we may find the grace, vision, and strength to better claim our identity as Christ followers. Due to the extraordinary circumstances of the world, we voted at the annual meeting on January 31st to suspend the bylaws for this year and allow our two outgoing council members a one-year extension of their terms. Many thanks to David Beard and Laurie Beal who agreed to serve an additional year. Also at the annual meeting, we voted to approve the nomination of Robin West to council to begin a three-year term. Many thanks to Robin for her willingness to serve. In addition to Dave, Laurie, and Robin, Nancy McNabb, Christy Hilton, Judy Spencer, and Bob Blair continue to serve as council members. Completing the council are our financial officers, treasurer until October, Bob McNabb, and financial secretary, Donald Miller. Friends in the congregation, you can see our council members here before you. Most of them are here on this call, and we are installing them together in this moment. These people have been called by God in accordance with the faith and order of this church to serve among us. They have accepted their call and are before us in witness to their willingness to serve. Leadership is a gift of God requiring us to be wise stewards of what God entrusts to our care. Leadership in the church is not a position of power or prestige. Rather, it is a position of service and humility as Christ himself was a servant to all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, all members of the 2021 Council, it is an honor and a gift to be entrusted with the responsibility for leadership in this congregation. Having prayerfully considered the duties and responsibilities of your leadership positions, are you prepared to serve in Christ's name and for the glory of God? If so, please say, I am. I am. I am. I am. Leaders cannot lead without support and encouragement. Leadership is always a partnership, a dance between those who serve and those who are supporting their service. Our leaders have pledged to serve wisely and responsibly following the guidance of God's spirit. As those supporting this service, it is our turn to pledge our support of them as they seek and lead and help us all follow our Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you as you are watching this video to respond with me. We, the members and friends of one United Church of Christ, witness to the joy that is ours to be your partners in service to Jesus the Christ. We promise to love you, 
to honor your leadership and support you so that we may truly and always be a faithful people for Christ and the world. And so friends on council in the name of Jesus Christ, on behalf of the people of one United Church of Christ, I rejoice to announce you are installed as the 2021 council. May the fullness of God's creativity, Christ's strength, and the Holy Spirit's wisdom be with you and bless you each day of this year. Amen. And may we be in a time of prayer. Eternal God, you seek us out in many ways and gather us into the company of your people. We are never alone. We are always held in the communion of saints, held with all of our kindred in Christ throughout the whole world. Today we give thanks for those who have answered the call to lead, serving on our congregation's church council and being your servants in this community of faith and in the world. We pray you would send your Holy Spirit upon our leaders that they may serve among us with wisdom and faithfulness. Help them to be diligent in their duties and spirit-filled in their leadership, that your church may flourish in the calling you place before it. Guide them to be the best stewards they can possibly be of the gifts you have entrusted to their care. Enable them to hear your voice and give them the strength and courage to follow where you would lead. May their witness prove worthy for all of us to follow as we are united in Christ's ministry to the glory of your name. Holy One, we give thanks for our leaders and as we pray to follow their example, may we be moved to greater sacrifice of our energy, time and passion for the world you love. We pray you would show us the ways we can connect with those who are lonely, those who need community to give hope to the weary and help all of your beloved children know that they are seen, valued, and known. As part of this effort, God, we raise to you our prayers, the people we see and know and have named on our prayer list, the people and situations we name quietly before you now. And we pray especially this week for Brittany and for Robert that you may hold them close and give them the healing that they need. We pray for all who are sick. We pray for all those who care for the sick. We pray for the healing of our community and of our world. And Holy One, as we pray for healing, we turn to you once again. You who know us, you who see us. You know the ways we struggle and what we need you know the ways we celebrate and what fulfills us. We pray to discern the path closer to you now and in the time ahead as we pray in the words Jesus gave us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sure. 
Beloved people of God, we leave this space remembering we are seen and known and loved by an everlasting and unshakable love. As you move back out into the world, may you do so with the grace of God, the peace of Christ, and the courage of the Holy Spirit surrounding you and sustaining you every moment of the way. Amen. <laughs>